Jumpers. Well, it has been a weekend for me with full of crazy jersey matchups. I think every single game that I watched had at least one uh, non-standard jersey in there. So I decided I'll go also with a non-standard pink Lusk jersey. So we'll see Lusk won wearing pink. And this was one of the two jerseys uh, that we'll talk about in this video because it was really all over Europe, everything was kind of weird. Uh, let's start in Bundesliga. I owe you the Monday evening result where Leverkusen beat Augsburg 3-1. Um, we'll see it was actually a big week for Leverkusen, except for the Europa League, of course. But um, they won nil, uh, and then late on, after the equalizer, they can manage to beat Augsburg. But Augsburg is really good in there, which meant that after this win, they jumped all the way up to fourth, whereas Augsburg was dropping down. You see, there was actually, with that one result, a lot of changes happening right there. But let's go to what happened on the weekend. Again, I watched highlights of the Saturday, Friday games, and I saw live a uh, large chunk of Gladbach against Leip Leipzig, so can tell you a little bit about that. Schalke gets a point, they even had the lead, but couldn't hang on because they gave away a stupid penalty. Um, cannot get moving out. Uh, Tio gives them uh, the lead and Gonzalez e e equalizes. Not much more that I can tell you, but I think it was a well-earned point uh, for both teams. Bielefeld Dortmund was again one of those games where Dortmund has possession. Bielefeld is hanging, hanging deep. And yeah, in the end, it's a uh, Meunier ball in that Hummels doesn't even know what to do, but put in the net in the 53rd that sets Dortmund on the way. And then he heads in a second one and that settles the game. Not a glorious win, but a win none, nonetheless. And you know, uh, Hummels, uh, the big hero, alas, he came off injured and probably will be missing now for a little bit, which is not good news if you're a Dortmund fan, because he at least gives the defense some stability. Um, Augsburg, bouncing back from the loss to um, Leverkusen, takes the lead through Vargas, or Erlang against Mainz, um, largely controlling the game. Uh, but then Onisivo, a little bit out, out of nowhere, gets the equalizer. And we could have even gotten the lead with, with, with a little bit of luck. Um, but then Hahn, after a cross by Finn Borgerson, uh, with a bicycle kick in. Yes, he didn't hit it clearly. So it was maybe not the greatest of bicycle kick goals. A little like the one of Slatan, which we'll talk tomorrow. Uh, but bicycle goal, nonetheless. I mean, it's still an athletic feat, I have to say. Of course, you want that he hits it full on, it hits the corner. Uh, of the goal, but hey. And then he adds a third one and gives uh, Aug Augsburg a well-deserved 3-1 win. Uh, Bremen uh, take the lead early in the second half uh, through Jeff Sargent, totally against the runner of play because uh, Frankfurt actually had already taken the lead through Kamada, but it was by a fraction of sight. Uh, this this, this uh, was one of those offsides in the build-up that are always a little bit annoying. Silver gets the equalizer in the 65th, but um, Frankfurt cannot find the win, but Dost missing a huge chance there. So yeah, um, with Frankfurt you always, you have the feeling that maybe the talent is there to make a leap towards the European spots clearly, but then there's always a little bit holding them back. So yeah, not an easy job for Frankfurt. Um, Köln Bayern, first of Bayern playing for the first time with the black uh, third jerseys with the uh, lozenge pattern in there a little bit. I have to say those are pretty amazing and this reminds me I've more or less decided the next uh, jersey review I will do is on the Bundesliga so just a heads up there. I will talk about that jersey but that's a really good looking one I have to say. Um, penalty gives uh, Müller the chance to make it 1-0 then Gnabry you know it is a typically Gnabry run uh, no one is getting to him, he installs him, makes it 2-0 and then Bayern, who have been saving a lot of uh, people. <laughs> I mean, Chupo Moting was playing for them. Uh, just, they don't, don't need to do much. Köln is not that dangerous overall. And they get a late goal through Drexler, but never then really have had, had a chance to e equalize. They were in the game, but it was not, um, you know, imminent that they will lose, uh, that, they, that they will get a point against Bayern. 
And then the Gladbach Leipzig game. I think many people were looking forward to that, that, that one because you know two offensively minded, uh, similar thinking coaches, but they kind of neutralized themselves. So hold it down to the Gladbach jerseys, who played in a blackout kit to celebrate their 100th birthday. I have to say it was uh, it's a, it's a little bit a little bit. Weird. I don't necessarily like those blackout kits uh, all that much. Although this one with the Borussia on the back it was kind of alright, but. Still, I rather see a nicer color kit and for Gladbach this thing, I would like to see some green finally on a kit again. Uh, first half I think was a little bit more Leipzig, uh, just a tad more. They had a little bit more control, a little bit better chances, but uh, the two teams neutralized themselves. Uh, but in the end then it was uh, Gladbach who found the right switch and this uh, Hannes Wolf on loan. The light again is going crazy. Uh, on loan from Leipzig, who finds the winner, then a player even hits the post. Leipzig had only uh, had one good chance by Saar Sabitzer, but in the end, Gladbach, who were afraid that they will give up a lead again late, hangs on and gets a vital win over Leipzig. And as we'll see, this will have also have big implications on the table. Um, Freiburg loses at home 2-4 to Leverkusen, didn't see much of that, is same as uh, Hertha and Wolfsburg. This one, one seemed, uh, the draw here seemed a very logical result. We still have a Monday night game between Hoffenheim and Union Berlin. With that, we have the following standings. Well, switch on the table. The top two are the top two, and as, as we'll see next, the Klassiker is coming up next weekend, and then we'll have a clear uh, leader, Bayern. After that one, um, Leipzig, of course, with that uh, drops is the second time they drop points. Uh, Leverkusen still unbeaten uh, together with Wolfsburg, so the last two unbeaten teams. But you know, if you have many draws in there, you cannot play up, up on top, especially well, that's, that's true for Wolfsburg. Gladbach is now also m moving in touch with the Champions League race again. And when you look at it, um, the league is actually fairly balanced overall. Uh, but you know, you see the top and then it kind of goes down. Uh, mine still not having had a single point one after the six game doesn't look really good for them either. And as I said, next round we actually have two really good games. Of course, Saturday 6.30 Dortmund Bayern, I think, is one we have to uh, mark the cal calendars for. This can be a pre-decider. It is played in Dortmund, so yeah, uh, maybe there is a chance for a good game. I personally like Bremen and Köln uh, because those are two of my favorite, favorite teams and they're hanging out there, but it's more like, yeah, will Köln finally uh, get going and then Leverkusen Gladbach is another one. That's huge that the ad might already like go a long way of deciding who will play in the Champions League because it seems like Bayern, Dortmund and Leipzig are pretty much set and then it's all, all a race for the fourth spot. Let's move to Austria. Um, not an exciting round, um, but there was one exciting result in there that I actually didn't see a high high of. That's Hartberg winning 2-1 against Austria. I mean, that I have to say um, gives Hartberg five, finally win and that, that came unexpected. So Burton disposing of Reed 4-0 after being completely dominated by Lask last week, losing 4-0 and should have been more. Uh, gave them a big comeback that Salzburg is beating Tirol with what came did, did not come uh, unexpected. Uh, Rapid, I saw actually how ha that's completely dominated. Alter should have maybe scored more goals there. Um, they were up 3 0, and then the goal for Alter came very, very late, so it was not really a contest. Wolfsberg again, two Lindel penalties, like at Feyenoord. Uh, Earl sets set, set them a path for, for a win. They had a uh, uh, third, third one, and um, Admira can only pull one back in the second half. And what can I tell you about the last game? Except that last played in pink jerseys for the last crazy mad matchup in this round for me. Um, they get an early goal, really nicely played counter attack. Um, that goes to Eggestein, who then unleashes Balic, who is really, really fast, scores the goal. Uh, have them largely controller of the game, although Sturm had their chances. Um, if they would have a faster striker, it could have been dangerous in the second half. Uh, so around the 60th minute, you could feel that Lask is kind of getting tired. Or Sturm is really finding a way. And those uh, the, two co the, the two coaches are really a, know each other well and actually play well uh, within each other. So that worked and Sturm Graz didn't have the big chance but they had chances to probably get an equal and the way played would have been deserved but in stoppage time uh, Dante um, 
wants to play a back pass to the goal, goalkeeper, the goalkeeper runs the other way, so maybe, maybe it's communication. And Matson, a uh, Danish under-21 player, um, steals the ball, plays it into Eggestein, and it's 2-0 for Lusk, and that ends the game, more, more or less, to my relief, because this was a tough um, game. In the standings, yeah, the top three still the same. St. Burton now can leapfrog uh, Sturm Graz, so uh, that's interesting. But you can al already see Wolfsburg is now also getting in touch up there, there, there again. So it seems like at the uh, Salzburg Rapid Lask Wolfsburg, I really think those are the four teams that, that, that will get in there. And then it's St. Burton, Sturm and Austria that I think will play for the last spot. Reed uh, find themselves now in last place. They have only won the first game and since then they're kind of hanging on, which was is a little bit surprising because they always seem to be a little bit in the game. Uh, but yeah, was not happening this week. And for the next round, we have the big clash between Rapid and Salzburg. Uh, I've been waiting for that because I want that Rapid is getting in the league, finally. A little bit of hit on the head. Wolfsburg against Sturm, also a pretty big game. And then uh, uh, Reed Hartberg can also mean something for, you know, relegation spots or so. Points will be half, doesn't count much. Lask is playing against Gankas Mira. That should be an easy win unless they really, really lose a lot of uh, energy playing at the Royal Antwerp during the week. That's me. I'm sorry for the lamp. <laughs> I'm Halloween, I guess. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought about the games in Germany and if you saw anything in Austria. Uh, and yeah, I will talk to you soon next week. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon as it will remind you whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!